Welcome to Uncomfortable Conversations about Culture and Christianity. My name is Eric, and today I'm joined by Jess. Hello, world. And Alex. Hey, Uncomfies. Good to uh, not see you, but be talking to you. <laughs> Gonna need to workshop that one. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. <laughs> everyone. It is good to know that you're listening. Uh, I think is what you meant. Like, you didn't mean it's... You're not you're not excited to not see them. Yeah, exactly. It's not about. It was kind of like I was wrong in how I approached that. Okay, it's fine. We just accept him as he is, and it's okay. It's just it was one of your weaker intros. That's all. It felt like the least thought out. It was so strong though. That's That's true. Mm -hmm. It started so. Yeah, but here's the thing: Mm -hmm. we have an opportunity for Mm -hmm. people to talk about what we talk about on the show. Mm. So maybe go through books that we talk about or have conversations, um, you know, make fun of us or mm. have feedback around, you know, some of the things we talk about Yeah. Uh, through a, a community group that we've put together. Um, one of our, our loyal uh, listeners and uh, named Russ has, he's like, Hey, I want to have more dialogue around these things and not just listen to what you guys say, but it's, you know, sparks ideas or, I have things I want to talk about, you know, from those episodes. And so uh, if you're someone that's like, hey, I want to be a part of that. Maybe you're not a part of a community group. The cool thing is this is on Zoom. Mm-hmm. So whether you live in Florida or you live in South Dakota or Istanbul, Iowa, yeah, mm-hmm. Istanbul or wherever uh, mm-hmm. you're able to connect to this group. And so you can do that by going to cccomaha.info. Mm. You got a little button that says groups and you can just go yeah. search it. Look for the Uncomfortable Podcast Community Group. Uh, I know that uh, it'd be a fun place to join and have conversations like this if this is stimulating for you. So, Another thing, talking about making fun of us, I would like to do just a little housekeeping <laughs> yes. because <laughs> I, uh, I personally edit this show every week and we try not to do any editing. Like we try to keep it very uncut, conversational. Yeah, you're supposed uh, to edit the show. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I edit... A trim, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and add some music and that sort of thing. But I don't really, you know, cut sections out that often. But last week we had a problem with the voicemail and it brought got brought to my attention that we just left this whole section in there of us struggling with that. And my apologies to our listeners if that bothered <laughs> you. But really it's kind of like an Easter egg or behind the scenes little, yeah. oh, I, I get to hear uh, what happens when things go wrong. <laughs> For all of those people that thought for like a hundred and whatever, 70 episodes that we are perfect. Yeah. That we've never finally know <laughs> <laughs> that you two the had yeah. some issues. Yeah. Some issues. I'm still waiting for mine. Oh uh, yeah. Although it's, I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. I, it's I, happened in the past, but that's all. That's all. Just want to say thanks for, thanks for listening. Even through our blunders. Raw. Yeah. Yep. And uncut. Uh huh. Hopefully we don't have a blunder this week because we do have a voicemail. What'd you say? <laughs> Hopefully we don't have a blunder. <laughs> <laughs> he did kind of slur that word a little bit. So. Oh, we do have a voice. <laughs> we need to edit this out now. <laughs> no, no, no. Just it's kidding. Fine. Uh, hopefully we follow. don't have a blunder this week. But okay. if you do want to leave us a voicemail, again, that number is 402 885 9930. It's fun to get some funny ones, to get some serious ones. But either way, we're here to talk about it. So here's a voicemail. Mm, yeah. Nice. Hey, my name's Jacob. Uh, got a question for for everybody, really. Uh, Two part question: If there was an animated depiction of your life, uh, a would you want it to be a movie or a TV show? And B, what would you want your character to be if it were to be found in a kitchen? Uh, anywhere from utensils to appliances, <laughs> napkins, uh, a TV show or a movie, and what? What that could be found in a kitchen would depict you in that. Uh, thanks for the show. Love it. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, I look forward to your answers. Thanks. I, I'm concerned a little bit about what Jacob does in his free time. <laughs> like this, this question is is out there. It's so creative. It's I'm very like, creative. It's Everyone's so creative. Two part question. Yeah. 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 Uh, the two part. So let's clarify here. If you were an animated. Uh, I guess it's, oh, do you want to be either an animated TV show or an animated movie? Mm-hmm. And then in that, within that TV show or movie, your character is a ki- kitchen utensil, right? Yep. And you need to choose like which it. one you'd be. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like the brave little toaster kind of situation. I know I want to be a TV show. Okay, because you want it to you want it to last longer. Yeah, mm. I want it to last longer. Be able to evolve a little bit more. More character development. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for See sure. That. Yeah. And I like no secret. I'm not the biggest movie buff around, so that's why too long. I picked TV shows. Yeah, I can. Not long enough. Sounds like. Yeah, but my answer. I feel like I should say blender because I made a blunder <laughs> that sounded like blender. But Something my like answer that. is I'm the pizza cutter, you okay. know, just a little pizza wheel cutter <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I like to cut things, you know, mm. you can cut the cheese, you can cut pizza, which is for you, cutting who's pizza. Cut, you're cutting who's cutting cheese, cheese who's with cutting a pizza There's cutter. cheese on he pizza. He just wanted a reference. Oh, okay. You just uh, wanted to say it, that. Mostly it's like, it is the... I try to think of creative ways basically to use that. You know, we use it for waffles. I use it for waffles at my house. Mm. I use it idea. for cutting so many different homemade, things that my uh, kids have. Wait, pasta? My, yeah, homemade like homemade pasta. Like chicken and noodles. Yeah. Like noodles for that. We've cut it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, okay. So you could you're wanting to really claim like reclaim its position yeah. in the hierarchy of kitchen utensils. Well, yeah, I don't want it to only be a pizza mm-hmm. cutter. You know, I want it to be you know, a, a multi, cause mm. I just have so many, I, I'm simple. Yeah. <laughs> I'm simple. Like a, like just something with a handle and a wheel, but you want people Yet, to know you have value. Yeah. I have and you want them to value. know you're sharp. I'm sharp. Yes. Can't, I'm very you, sharp. Yeah, I'm on a roll. You're dull though. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> you, yeah, sometimes you really got to work sharp. at it. <laughs> to get, I, was I sharpen my pizza <laughs> cutter. Oh, you do. Okay. And the other thing is, there are multiple kinds. I think Pampered Chef has their little kind of mm-hmm. the like okay. that you see in a restaurant. That we're going <laughs> I just want to clarify which one I am. I'm not the the uh, the big moon shaped big moon one. Shaped from one. Pizza I am. Hut. I am You're like certainly a, a standard handle, a standard handle <laughs> circle okay. uh, pizza. All right. I mean cutter. This is uh, all right. This is too. Can't long. wait to watch right. the TV cutter. show about Alex the pizza cutter. Uh, right. Would uh, your name be Alex uh, or Philip? Uh, Everyone's gonna fill up on pizza when he gets done <laughs> cutting it, or waffles, or whatever he decides yeah. to cut. Yeah, Jeez. I think I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stick with that. Alex. All right. Wow, that was yes. that was a lot. Are you first of all? Are you an animated series I, or? I'm movie? gonna be a series, but okay. I'm gonna say that I am gonna be like the bluey length, so it's like ten to twelve minutes. Okay. Because I feel like that's just like good. Yeah. Bluey. The kids show based time. in Australia too. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. But I think, you know, it holds people's attention, mm-hmm. leaves yeah. them wanting a little more. Yeah. And they can binge it if they want. They, right. they give. Yep. Um, I think that I would be a cute dish towel mm-hmm. oh. hanging, hanging on the, maybe the handle of the oven. Because you just like to hang out. Hanging hang out. out. Mm-hmm. People but put also their hands on whip you that baby and- off if <laughs> yeah. you need to like. Pick up something hot. Yeah, you spill something. It's absor- you're very absorbent. You pick up I can all be the used dirt. in all situations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does it like? What? What's your name? Is it, you're gonna go with Jess still? Or? Yeah. Hmm. It's Jess. Yeah. Ooh, the okay. hand towel. <laughs> uh, Jess the hand towel. I like it. I think. I mean, pragmatically, I'm gonna say I want to be a movie just because if this movie is an animated movie about kitchen utensils that sounds painful to watch oh. and i don't want to make people watch an entire series uh, true, but so, I, the brave little toaster okay you just made me think that's that true. yeah that's good the, so you that would maybe true. be the more loved out of all okay but i'll be the movie i'm gonna okay. just go movie yeah uh and i'm gonna be the the, the kitchen aid mixer because i like to mix it up yeah baby uh oh. you know i feel like this is like a <laughs> a dating video from the night. Oh, we're, we're like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. yes, um, do it. Uh, you know, because you can just you can put all kinds of That's ingredients, true. and I'll I'll put I'll put them together, sweet or spicy. Uh-huh. Yeah, whatever. Make some bread. With I like can the make hook. the I can make the pizza dough that yeah. that Alex cuts <laughs> later, uh, <laughs> and I can make a mess that Jess cleans up. So <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, what I feel, a team uh, we are. Really, wow. <laughs> really excited uh, to produce this. If there's any uh, Hollywood producers out there looking to invest or someone uh, that wants to draw us up as those three things <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be incredible combine us into a picture uh, we'll share that on the discord if that happens so um well you're 
We got a sticker coming your way. What a question, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the a uncomfortable question. podcast. Keep those creative uh, questions. I love coming. the people that listen because we just we never know what we're gonna get. It's mm-hmm. just yeah, it's a highlight. Uncomfies are like what a box would you of be chocolates. if you're listening to this in some place you can comment like YouTube. Let us know what you would be, Austin. Producer what Austin would you looks be? over here. And he's he doesn't he doesn't, he doesn't know. know. Is a knife? Because <laughs> he really is sharp. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think a spoon. He's more of a spoon. <laughs> Small or big? Uh, he's a soup spoon. Like a, oh, a ladle. Sure. A ladle or yeah. a soup spoon? No, a soup spoon. Oh, yeah, like, like a tablespoon. Little table soup spoon. Or really spoon. But like the round. Oh, okay. you know? oh not soup oval, sp- but like. Yeah. More Does of anybody round. have those in their drawer? No. I don't have soup spoon. I, have a, I get them at restaurants, but. Yeah, and Austin wouldn't be found in a drawer. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's only hanging out, out at about. the restaurants. Got it. Yeah, he's, he's social. He's fancy. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again uh, for sending in your voicemails. You can do, if you have a voicemail, 402-885-9930, like we said. Uh, we'd love to hear from you today. We are going to be talking about genealogy, uh, which, and, and specifically the websites that you submit to and find out all of all of the fun facts about who your ancestry is and that sort of thing. And we have a guest. I do. Uh, Debbie's going to be joining us to talk about her experience, uh, which she's kind of uniquely positioned to share about of how she found out about her history and some family members and things like that. So be sure to stay tuned. That's coming up next. All right. Today we are joined by Debbie. Thank you for coming coming on the show and sharing your story with us. Now you, if people are wondering, what's your connection to the church? You were working here with the residency program for a number of years. And what was your title with the residents? I was the residency administrative manager and just had a blast with the residents. They were so, they're so much fun. So yeah. Just a really fun job. And so your, your role there was, I mean, you were pretty connected with them, making sure all the, all the, T's were dotted and the I's were crossed or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Or, and sometimes I'd miss a couple of T's or yeah. I dots, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty much um, just yeah, making sure that they <clears throat> got their books on time for their classes and setting up recruiting trips and going mm-hmm. on recruiting trips and um, creating a lot of fun memories with them on those recruiting trips. We've had um, just a blast and just also being a mom to them a lot of times when they first come in with no connections anywhere. Yeah. I tried to show up and just invite them over or just hang out with them. So they weren't stuck in the basement of somebody's house, which is usually a very nice basement, but they got out a little bit. Yeah. And that's great. So yeah. Yeah. Great. And for those that have no clue what the residency is that we're talking about mm-hmm. that aren't connected, maybe the CCC, we have a two year residency program where we partner with crown college where, you know, students can come in after they've got their undergrad to get their masters in Christian Administration mm-hmm. and now counseling as well. Correct. Yes. Um, and then they get you know full time experience mm-hmm. you know on the job in different departments. So at CCC, it's a big part of you know our culture here. So if you're like, what in the world are they talking about? Are they <laughs> yeah. building a cult there? No, not, yet. <laughs> not, not yet. quite. So and that's how you and Debbie got to know each other better too, right? Through recruiting. Yeah, I mean, so. I knew Debbie a little bit before that, but yeah, we got to go on a couple recruiting trips together. And I remember you know you're driving in a car, and I remember one trip we were going up to. I think Dort College and just started talking about just sharing crazy stories. I have kind of a wild family history background and didn't peg Debbie as having any (laughs) kind of uh, wild history background. And then she just started sharing. Like, I think at that time, like she had been using like or had discovered another family member that she didn't know about at the time through, uh, you know, there's tons of of these websites popping up all over time, Ancestry.com, you know, genealogy websites that are really designed, hey, to look back and find out if you have roots in, you know, different countries and so many different things. And so I got to hear from her and then I've kind of just asked her a few different times, any, you know, find any new siblings today? (laughs) And uh, sometimes her answer is yes. And so (laughs) I thought it'd be an interesting perspective, you know, to have this conversation because I think it, it, these things are popping up more and more Mm -hmm. and the more and more people that I'm talking to, you know, about these things. I think there's good questions to ask, you know, and how do you, if you find out something, whether it's a sibling or you find out something about your family history that was maybe you felt like a secret or whatever, like how do you start to 
have those conversations like with your family or how do you go about Mm -hmm. you discover you have a sibling or or a relative that you never knew about for whatever reason a variety of reasons how do you start to have those conversations and so i think it'd be it's going to be fun to just hear from debbie your perspective jess i think in the counseling world i'm sure you've dealt with this and just uh, i think this is going to be happening more frequently than less frequently uh with the internet and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so here we are yeah all right, so let's uh, let's dive into a little bit about these genealogy websites. Alex, you mentioned it. Um, beyond, I mean, I I've never done one. Uh, has everyone has I everyone else done? Obviously, it? have uh, yeah. yeah. Debbie's obviously <laughs> I done. haven't. I've hey, wanted to. Okay. I'm not either. I always joke with my wife. I'm like, I, what if uh, you know maybe I want to pick up a career as a serial killer later on or something <laughs> like that? Because then you're, you're like, registered. You're in a database, right? Your your DNA, they can find you. So I'm they like, can. I'm, not that that's actually a thing I ever want to belong to, but it's just one of those things where it is interesting to me and maybe I'm a paranoid person. Well, it's but, giving information. Uh, yeah. Maybe. So that is, because it is shared, right? That they kind of let you know that at a time, that that information yeah. is shared. Some of the interesting things on, I'm on 23andMe and they go into your health history and what mm. you might be slightly more at risk for. So on mine, I think I have, I'm slightly more at risk for celiac disease and slightly more at risk for macular degeneration. And so that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then they have these crazy things about like, um, you are more likely to be able to roll your tongue than someone else. And I mean, just all these different traits that are hilarious. Um, But there's a lot other than just finding out like, Initially, we were just interested in, hey, are we really from Germany, like Grandpa said? Or are we really yeah. from Ireland, like Grandma mm-hmm. said? Um, it was fun to actually get that, find out that information. Oh, it's really cool. And I think it's fascinating. I mean, on a personal level, but it's also um, something I think that's becoming more popular. There's even TV shows that you can watch. I, just, I remember it was a week or two ago, Edward Norton found out he was related. He's a... He's in movies, Alex. Okay. But he mm-hmm. found out that he was related to Pocahontas on oh, a show wow. called know, know Your Roots or Knowing Your Roots. So but he it's actually that, is or this yes, is a fictional he, tr- No, it's it was an actual okay. thing where they go through people's genealogy. And I think a lot of times we expect to go back and say like, oh, I was related to this king or queen. But we don't realize that also in doing that, you can find out, oh, I have a sibling or there's people actually living that mm-hmm. I could be connected to. But it's it's fascinating. Yeah, and you get, I think you find out, especially in a country like the United States or America, which is a country built, you know, from immigrants, and most people have immigrated. Almost everybody has from other places. It is interesting. Like I remember mm-hmm. being a kid, you know, and you you have like your history. I don't remember what age it is, but you do like your genealogy history, and it's like, all right, everyone brought in like a meal or some kind of product from like I you know, have German heritage or mostly German heritage. And so you'd bring in like a product from that and everybody would talk about, <laughs> hey, where are you from? And all that kind of stuff. And more and more removed were I becoming more and more mutts, you know, mm-hmm. in, especially in the United States and less and less like German American or Italian American. Obviously that, that still exists, but the further we are removed from, you know, Ellis Island and, you know, a lot of the, the immigration happening at the beginning of, of our country, uh, the more removed we are from it, but the more exciting it is to maybe go back and figure out some of those things. I found like it's interesting to find out. Oh, your last name changed at some point, like or the spe- yeah, the spelling, or- the spelling, yeah, the spelling of your last name or pronunciation of your last name changed, and all those kind of things. So there's, I think, a lot of and the health reasons. So I think some of them are built on not just necessarily finding out you know your family tree or history, but also like you said, some of those maybe health complexities that you right. have or, or the tendencies you have because of your family, which is interesting. Right. They talk about, they actually can tra- track to see if you have the BRCA gene or is that um, the breast cancer gene. And hmm. they also can look up if you're more likely to have Parkinson's or, wow. or things like that, which is really interesting. Wow. Hmm. So you said your the main reason that you decided to do it was just to see like you said, is, is gra- grandma and grandpa telling us the truth? Is this that, really where we came that from? That was my interest. My brother is very into genealogy. He has created our family tree that goes back to 1700s. And mm-hmm. um, it's very complex. He oh, wow. has stories of with pictures of different relatives on there, which they're fascinating once you can mm-hmm. get into it. Um, he has 
let's just say my grandma's history where she was a picture of her house, a picture of where she went to school. So that future generations can maybe look at what grandma was like at that time and what conveniences she had um, or didn't have like we have. So that was one of the reasons. The reason why I initially got into it was he wanted to be on Ancestry.com and he wanted me on 23andMe so that um, we could compare the different websites mm. oh, and okay. con- and oh, look back and see what relatives um, were connected to on those two sites. Okay, so tell us then what's what's the bigger story here then? You, you signed up to do that. Right. And now you're finding out some other information right. that you didn't expect. So to start a story off, I grew up with, I had one brother um, growing up and um, that's what we thought it was. <laughs> um, the day after my father passed away, my mother shared that my dad had a, another daughter and basically another family. And so she did not pop up through 23andMe, but that was our first um, foray into new siblings. And so there were a whole lot of emotions um, when we found out about that. Um, just, you know, wondering, wow, life wasn't really what we thought it was. And um, maybe dad wasn't exactly what who we thought he was. Mm-hmm. So that we had kind of grappled with that um, quite a bit at first. And we slowly got used to it, got to know um, our new sibling. And then a couple years <clears throat> passed and I got a match on 23andMe, and on 23andMe, it actually says, we predict that he is your half-brother, and it shows what percentage of DNA that you share. Hmm. And so the percentage of DNA that is shared leaves basically no doubt that Hmm. he is a half-brother as opposed to a cousin. Hmm. And so we reached out, got to know him. So now we had uh, two siblings, and here just a few months ago, we a on 23andme so i'm kind of bitter my brother has ancestry.com and everybody's popping up on my 23andme <laughs> so they're finding you yes yeah. and so um, we found out that we have another half sister and um wow. yeah so it's been crazy it's been um fun getting to know them but it's interesting to hear what emotions everybody has mm-hmm. with this so my brother and i who i grew up with have like kind of similar emotions but then my half brother was adopted and he was so excited to meet new siblings. Wow. And my half sister always thought the dad she grew up with was her dad. So there's just all mm. kinds of crazy emotions that go yeah. along with it. Yeah. I remember one time I was at a retreat, um, just speaking for the weekend and called my wife after it was maybe the Friday night and, you know, catching up, how, how are things at home and all that. And, uh, she's like, So I was at your parents tonight. They had family dinner and your mom got a call that she has a brother. And I mean, this was like a couple of years ago and he was 50. So he found out on his 50th birthday that his dad, his biological dad, uh, was different than the dad he was raised with, you know, his entire life. And so they, they didn't want to tell him. And and it was kind of the same situation. His, his, um, his dad that he grew up with, uh, had passed away and, you know, so just grew up that way. And then finally mom was like, Hey, I want you to know this. She was in, in, um, maybe declining health and has passed since, but she was like, Hey, I just want you to know this. And that was quite a crazy, you know, discovery for, I, I remember my mom and like my dad being like, I don't know who this guy is, you know, kind of trying to look into who this guy is before <laughs> meeting him at a restaurant and getting yeah. together. And, and one of the most fascinating things from that story, and we still have a great relationship uh, with my uncle, his name's Scott, but he, like my grandpa is one of a kind. I, everybody's family is one of a kind, but my grandpa is like the only person I really knew that would wear like sweatpants and a, the nicest button down shirt, you know, like <laughs> I never met another person. And then like, you know, his slides and Scott, like never met, never lived with, never knew about my grandpa, his entire life. And these guys like dress the exact same and their mannerisms are like the exact same. So for me, I mean, obviously there's that nature nurture kind of conversation yeah. that is always <laughs> going to place. And I was just like, this is amazing. Cause those are things that I, had previously assumed were like more learned exactly. you know, based on nurture and the environment you were raised in. And it's just fascinating as that relationships evolved just to kind of continue to see it. And then, like you said, a lot of those 
emotions, you know, my mom was super excited cause she didn't know about it, but I think it took a little more along for Scott, you know, to feel like, well, was, did everything, was my childhood a lie or why did I never know? And then you, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out that trust. Like, why did you not tell me, you know, to his mom, he felt like that. And so there is so much complexity. Mm-hmm. I think that happens in that kind of situation. So we, with the nature versus nurture thing was crazy. I was with my brother who I grew up with and our half brother and one of the half sisters at a ball game. And it was the first time we were really getting to know um, our half brother and my brother who I grew up with, he and I were sitting next to each other at this um, Brewers game. And we started watching our half brother and he did everything my dad did. Oh, wow. it, and he had never ever met him, mm-hmm. but crazy things like, um, my dad would get up and high five the entire row. And then all of a sudden become best friends with the guy two seats down. <laughs> and all of a sudden our half brother's doing the same thing. He's tr- making best friends with the guy two, two people down, high fiving both rows, both sections. And we're both like blown away yeah. that, I mean, that you would think again, I would have thought that that part would have been more nurture or like if he had grown up with him, I would expect maybe mm. that, but anyway, wow, just fascinating. Like you said. Yeah. It really is. Can you go a little deeper into, cause I think this is fascinating. Like even having worked um, with other people that have had similar experiences, I think a lot of times we hear the story, but would you be willing to talk a little bit more about just the emotions that you felt and how you process that? Cause I think it's, Maybe, I mean, maybe you were shocked or sad or like there's a levels of emotions. Like, how did you process that? Did you want to, want to like, uh, isolate yourself and process it? Or like, how did, how was that journey for you being able to like today sit here with us and talk about it? Um, it started out pretty rough actually. Mm. I mean, when we first found out about my half sister, um, and finding out that the day the day my dad died, I guess I might have said the day after, but it was actually the day he died. We, were, my brother and I, were angry, mm-hmm. and we're at standing a couple of days later at his funeral, and we're both angry. Mm-hmm. Um, and we both did go through the whole thing of was our entire childhood a lie? We thought dad was a workaholic, but actually he was gone doing other things. And and then it helped to explain so much more of why my mom was the way she was because of all the hurt and pain she was carrying. And so then we'd kind of switch from being angry at dad to being so angry that he hurt mom. And then the process just took a long time. And then meeting our half sister and hearing about how he, our dad had spent time with their family Mm. was also a whole another like mind blowing process. I did um, seek some counseling. but mainly I'd say through par- my brother is a, who I grew up with is a strong believer. I'm a strong believer and through processing with him and him encouraging me spiritually and myself encouraging him, um, it's really helped a lot. Um, finding the next half brother wasn't who the one on from um, 23 and me wasn't quite as hard, but this latest one has rocked my brother who I grew up with like a lot more. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting and seeing how and where we think God wants us in this story. Mm -hmm. Um, One book I had read was uh, Kay Arthur as Silver Refined. And she talks about turning disappointments into his appointments. Mm -hmm. And we have really seen that in this because uh, my brother and I, as I said, who I grew up with, are both strong believers, but none of the siblings are, are half siblings. And so being able to help them get one step closer to the Lord, um, we're, he and I, my brother, um, are very bold in our faith with them. And that's one of the first things we talk about. So that's that's helped process, but there's just... For instance, there's a wedding coming up. And so I met um, the my half-sister's mom, who would be the woman who my dad had the affair with. And that was like a mind blow. There's just different things that all of a sudden rock you, yeah. where you're like, whoa. I thought I was completely healed and fine. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, something, a little turn in the, in the path, and you're like, 
kind of rocked again and have to go mm. back through it. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's probably some of the mystery of like, where will the, um, I don't know, deception or where where will this end? You know, like every time you probably think, okay, we've solved the mystery. You know, anytime there's another mystery that that pops up, you're just like, where, how deep is this? Or how, you know, as it's kind of like doing an archaeological dig, it's like, how many layers right. are there to this? And with, with each layer, there's like this celebration of newfound, but also like grieving of like what's lost right. in the middle of that relationship. So I think... Yeah, that is, that's fascinating. And from a, I don't know, spiritual side, you're like, okay, well, clearly if he had three children we didn't know about, there was a definite problem there. And do I need to worry about that with my kids? Do Mm. I, um, just different things like the addiction must have been there. So is that something that we need to make sure that all of our kids know about like, hey, this is something you need to watch out for. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting mm-hmm. where you ch- start processing it. Yeah, lots of layers. Yes. So I'm curious, Debbie, or any uh, any of uh, us, like, do you think it's important to set clear boundaries, you know, as you're, you know, you both are like, hey, we kind of have a goal of where we're trying to figure out maybe the pros and cons of both of these and how much family we know what advice would be given to like setting boundaries of like, okay, if you're going into this, are there things that I don't want? Cause I think like those siblings could probably reject, you know, your half siblings could reject any communication with you after the match or whatever. So how would you go about like, okay, I want to know this information, but I don't want to know this other, you know, trunk load of information that could come along with that. Are you able to even select those kind of boundaries inside of these? Not that I know of. I mean, (laughs) All of a sudden, you get a new DNA match, and, and they, their name appears, and everything. Their name appears. Their percentage of um, DNA they share with you. Um, yeah, and my brother has all the family members that we knew about, and I have all the family members that we didn't know about online. So it's just it's crazy. Yeah, so. that is. Jess, would you say? You know, well, like I was just from- going to say. I think for you, and I'm assuming. So correct me if I'm wrong, but because you've had the experience multiple times, you kind of know how your reaction might be. Right. So that helps you moving forward, knowing yourself, what your boundary might be or to be able to recognize, Hey, I'm getting too close to this, or this is triggering something for me. But I think it just goes to show it's also helpful for us to be aware of our reactions and is something making me feel more anxious or depressed. Like that's to me sometimes a indication of, okay, is there a boundary that needs to be set or is there something I need to be, you know, paying more attention to or that I need to avoid or not be a part of, which is within a boundary. And so I'm assuming for you, it's if you found another sibling that you would say, okay, this is maybe how I'm going to react. So this might be a way that I'd want to react or communicate or handle it yeah we by the last one um i think the best part of that is since the brother and i who i grew up with um had been through it various times when we were talking to her on the phone i think we knew we were able to comfort her in a different at a different level Mm. um Mm -hmm. saying hey we know this is rough this this news is just kind of blows your mind and here's what you might expect. So kind of the Bible verse that talks about comforting those because when the way you've been comforted. And so we were able to walk with her through it and just handle it so much better than we did the first time around. Um, The boundaries, um, I wish I would have understood the boundaries at first because the first time through was... uh, a different experience for multiple reasons. And I did not have any boundaries at that time. And that some of that wasn't working out so well. So how about, uh, I'm curious outside of the siblings, the the moms, right? So each of you have different moms. And so what have their reactions been like? I mean, is your mom still, my mom is not still alive. My mom um, had passed away before, um, before any of this happened. Okay. Which, well, except for the half sister and we met her, but didn't share that with our mom, but it hadn't really gotten real close. Um, 
So our first sibling's mom knew, she, the, the our the half-sister, she knew everything about us. She had been shown pictures about us. She was excited to meet us. Mm. Um, her mom knew all about our family. She was excited to meet us. Um, so she was excited. The My half-brother, uh, he just shared with his 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 adoptive mom um, that he had met his real mom or his biological mom, I'm sorry. And um, that was very difficult for his adoptive mom. And mm-hmm. it was difficult for both of them, but both of them met and it was kind of a sweet deal, but very difficult. Yeah. So what would you say to people listening to this? Maybe they're either they're considering do it, signing up for one of these ancestry websites, or maybe they have and they saw the match and they're, do I reach out to this person? What do, what would you tell that person? What are some things that maybe, is there a mental checklist or is there something that would just be good for them to think about before kind of launching out there and doing it? Um, I think I would take a breath and take a step back probably and take some time to evaluate what it is you really want. Yeah. Um, because most of the time when you get that match, somebody's good. One of the two of the people are going to reach out and you have to figure out what do I really want from this relationship? Do I really mm-hmm. want to um, dive into this relationship and share my life with this, with another person? Am I ready for that? Maybe I just really need to take some time to make sure I am ready for that whole revelation to unfold because there's so many different things that come out as you get to know these people Yeah, where you find, Oh, this is what actually happened. And finding out if you're really ready for that. Um, And then there's also your family. You have to consider, is my family ready to meet this new person? Um, Are they at a place in their life where they can handle getting to know this new uncle or this new aunt? And they have kids, so these are your new cousins then. Um, So it's, it's a whole lot to think about. So I think my main advice would be step back, pray, Mm -hmm. take a lot of time to pray about it and don't jump in um, without first evaluating things. Yeah, because there's not, you can't really have an expectation that this is your long lost sister and we're going to be best friends or they're going to be accepting of this or, or even I think there's probably scenarios where people are like, this is my way of getting justice, like right. to prove, you know, for my mother, cause she was hurt or this right. or for my father, whatever the scenario is. Right. And I suppose some of those motivations are not healthy at all to go into this with. Yeah. So when I'm, I spent time with my half sister, my half brother, and it was interesting, the different hurts that they carried mm-hmm. because my half sister had known him, but not my father, but not very much. My half brother was kind of bitter because he never knew him. Yeah. And so, and then I'm standing back going, I didn't know anything about you guys. Yeah. And I thought we had a normal childhood. And so there's just a lot of emotions when all the different people are getting yeah. together because mm-hmm. reality is coming to the surface uh, and you're just having to deal with it, I guess. Yeah. And I, I think outside of even, you know, finding lost siblings or maybe some of those things is making sure, you know, you're mentally prepared for what, even if it's finding out, you know, maybe some of your family history medically, you know, for some people, it could actually be debilitizing and crippling to know, Hey, I have this gene. Maybe that gives me, I mean, more access or, or more probability to have breast cancer, or I have like this gene that might lead towards this happening in my life. I know for some people that becomes more anxiety and more crippling and You're right. and what you do is actually kind of create this narrative and live in this fear that this is going to happen to you, even though it's a percentage. I mean, it, if I even found out 1% chance, you know, there's 1% chance of something happening to me, I'm going to all of a sudden have more of a right. fear and live maybe with a little bit more, uh, of a less optimism, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh, w- <clears throat> even knowing that's a possibility. And I think, so anytime we maybe dive into one of these, I think knowing your family history and all that kind of stuff is, is good. It's wise. I think you can, 
figure out patterns of addiction and abuse and a lot of different things that happen. But I think prayerfully considering it and, you know, being ready that you could find out anything. And then what right. are you going to do with that information? Is it going to wreck your life? Right. And if it's, if you're someone that is tended to worry or tended towards anxiety, it might not be, you know, right. the best thing to go yeah. and, and take this. Or, you know, there, you might have differences in siblings that want to have that relationship. So you and your brother are kind of on the same page, but I think there's times where, you know, another sibling might not be on that same page Correct. and they might not be embracing, you know, this newfound reality. Right. And so knowing that you might have different expectations and walking mm -hmm. through that with them or, you know, talking through maybe the scenarios with your sibling before jumping onto, you know, one of these programs like this, um, because it could rock their world as well, you know, to find that out. And so I think having some of those conversations on the front end, being proactive about it, uh, will be better if you do find out something that you need to be reactive about. Mm -hmm. So I think another thing is, maybe if you don't want to avoid it and you feel anxious is to have a good support system or someone else that you trust that's going to be in your corner mm -hmm. that you can let into up this part of your life that can help you process or give you support or read the results to you. Yeah. 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 And laugh with you. Like, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. to have those friends who can walk beside you and say just the right things, because sometimes it's interesting what you hear from other people. That some of the yeah. reactions are interesting. So wow. most of my friends have are just amazing support systems. Is that they're amazing supports? Yeah. Well, Debbie, it's a fascinating story, and maybe we'll have to have a part two if there if more is revealed down the road. <laughs> uh, but thank you for your time today, and thanks for joining us and sharing this and being vulnerable. And yeah, um, really appreciate that. Uh, if you have, if you're listening and you have any questions or concerns, you want to reach out to us, you can do that by sending us a voicemail to 402-885-9930 or send us an email, uh, to podcast at cccomaha.org. You can always reach out to us on social media, either Instagram or TikTok at cccoma podcast. But until next time, we'll talk to you then. <laughs>